Hello and welcome back to Shenzhen IO. Let's open the data sheet and let's look at our next objective. Carbine Target Illuminator. Now, as I've said before, this is actually my first time seeing any of these. So, uh, this is going to be 100% blind from here on out. Uh, hopefully, uh, we won't be too stuck and you get to watch me struggle for three hours. We have a deal to create a highly portable infrared targeting device that automatically switches emitter modes based on range. At long range the aiming laser is on, at mid range the aiming laser switches to half power and turns on a 23 flood emitter. At a close range, it switches completely to a 60 degree flood. I've placed a copy of the table on your desk. As a mounted add-on for any type of carbine weapon, it has the potential to do very well across government and law enforcement agency. And Carl just says, I'm going to note right out of this one if you don't mind. So let's open this up and it looks like we're actually going to need our instructions because that infrared meter is definitely here. So let's just bring this up so y'all can see it. I, I, I just I remember seeing it here. I know it's here and she said that she placed it on my table. So that to me means it's here. Infrared Infrared Honestly Honestly There we go So it's kind of working like a radar sending this out and if it comes back I'm guessing as one or two then we need to have 0%, 0%, 100%. And here we need to have 50, 50, 0. And here we need to have 100, 0, 0. That actually seems uh, fairly easy. So let's see. Simple input connected to a miniature radar unit, which indicates it fires. That indicates when it fires a radar ping. So it fires out, fires in. We need to measure the time between the two? Holy shit, how do I do that? I mean, I could do... I could do this what I'm calling the hard way. Oops. <clears throat> so... Test of equal... I 
guess if yes. Uh, jump count. Uh, if no, sleep one. Jump start. So we'll put a start up here. <clears throat> So that'll just wait. And now, we need to put count down here. So this is going to be sleep one. It's going to sleep one. It's going to test if PO is equal to 100. If it is, wait. <clears throat> if it's not on, add one. Add one, and then I guess uh, jump count. But if it is on, uh, actually, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, add one here. So if it's not on, uh, jump to count. If it is on, Move ACC to X2. X3 we need her. Move ACC to X3 and uh, I guess we'll sleep one here. So what this will do, and let's just stick one here, uh, you're going to select XO, and then just move XO to the accumulator, and then that's it. That's all you're going to do. So basically, my hope here, it's going to see if this triggers. If that does not trigger, it's going to just go to sleep and jump right back to the start. If it does trigger, it's going to start counting. So it jumps down there, it sleeps for a cycle, it adds one, it tests if the other thing is on, if it's not, it goes back, sleeps one, adds one, tests if it's on, it actually is this time, so now it'll move two out. So that's a two. Oop, you got a two. All right. So now let's go here. Uh, we should get so from from the highs. So you get one, two, three, four. We should get four here. Oh shit! Uh, uh, move move zero to the accumulator. All right, we gotta clear that off after we send it out. So send it out. We got a two over here. All right, continue out this way. Do do do. And we got a four over here. Perfect. Let's go over here. This should be one, two, three, four, five. It's a five. There you go. All right. So we got a perfect little counter right there. So now, <clears throat> let's move this one more. I'm thinking, let's put this here, swing this around, no. put that there, put this here, alright, I'm hoping I have enough, well, I can do this in nine lines of code. Um, so if it's one or two, we're putting the flood 60 out. I 
until the next thing happens? That should actually make it easier, right? Um, yeah, that should actually make it easier, I think. So, um, ourselves a bigger chip. Cut that. Get rid of this. Let's try that. Let's get rid of that. No, that's still down. Shit. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Oops, um, <clears throat> let's see. We would have to get rid of two. Maybe if we did like a comparable to five. Yeah, I, I like that idea. So if it's less than three, this is the first situation. Uh, let's do. Let's actually cut this or copy this and 
Now we'll cut it. We'll cut that. Uh, test comparable. Is ACC comparable to five? That'll be our next test. So if it's less than five, we need to do. If it's less than five. What the fuck did I do? <laughs> Alright, so compare to five. If it's less than five, because we've already got one and two out of the way. If it's less than five, move uh, 50 to P1, move 2 to X3. Maybe jump sleep, maybe not. No, that's that's nine. Otherwise. Cuts us down a little bit. it up to 100, but it doesn't stop it. So maybe... Just add in a move 0 to P1 here, and then do everything else, and here add in a Zero to Poe. Zero P1. Would that be 
off. Just that'll just turn itself off when it wakes up. Oh fuck! Uh, 60 works for some reason. Okay. So you sleep until you get information. Oh, you don't get any information. Less than one. No, what? Oh. Come on. Cut. Unbelievable. Now, would you please? And this is like I said, I've, I've mentioned this before. This is the way I usually solve these puzzles. Like, I keep, I'll do something, I'll find a new mistake, and then I'll add something to fix the mistake. This is how I, I do this out. I don't have the ability to uh, visualize the solution at the start and just write it out. I have to, okay, this might work. Try it. Something goes wrong. Okay, why did this go wrong? Let's fix that. That's how I do this. And uh, it's worked again. So, here's what we do. Chip number one is a counter. Uh, has the radar signal been sent out? If yes, we're going to jump down to the counting section of the chip. If no, go back to sleep and start over. Okay, test it again. It actually is on this time. All right, let's jump to count. So, we will wait one cycle, add one for the count, and then test is the other... Is the, has the symbol come back? It has not. So let's just jump back up to start counting again. And counting means wait one cycle, add one to the count. It has the symbol come back. Yes, it has. All right. Move the count we have because it's adding one for each count. Move this count, meaning there's two time units, 
out to the next chip. Reset the accumulator to zero, go to sleep, and then of course start over. This one sleeps until it finds something, moves this something into the accumulator, moves a three out, it always moves a three out. I think just to wake the thing up. And so this thing turns off its two outputs. Uh, and then finally, so that this three is just a wake up call to this. I actually don't like this. I don't like the way this is designed. This is a wake up call to this, and then it brings in that signal. Okay, now it's we know it's a three. But that's not the actual symbol. Uh, how does it compare to two? If it's greater than two, if it's a three, you just go back to sleep. Which works just fine, because this thing's still up here doing tests. Like this has a stage to just turn itself off. So it jumps back to sleep. It goes through this fast, uh, detecting that it was just the wake up signal and going back to sleep. So it works fine, but I don't I don't particularly like that way it works. Okay, now it's testing if it's less than three. If it's less than three, according to my map, if it's less than three, uh, you need to just turn the 60 degree flood completely on. And down here, how does it compare to five? So we do, this will be less than 5, because we've already ruled this one out. So this will be less than 5, and this will be otherwise, okay? So, uh, is it less than 3? It actually is. So move a 1, which is just a signal, move a 1 over to this chip, and then just reset yourself back to sleep. Okay. This one wakes up because it receives that one, it turns itself off automatically, and then brings in the one. Test how it compared to zero. It's going to be less than zero, so it's going to move 100 to PO because uh, one and two on time units mean 100% for the flood, 60. So it's going to it's going to skip this jump to sleep, it's going to move 100 out, and it's going to jump back to sleep. Beautiful. And to do, do that chip does its thing again, waiting for a new signal. And we don't need to... We don't need to shut off anything until we get the next radar in. So we can just chill. So, okay, now we've got the radar in. That was a four count. This thing's going to start over. It's going to move three out, tell this thing to wake up and turn itself off. That's why we have that three. It tests here. Is it a three? Yes, it is. Go back to sleep. This thing, how does this, uh, is it less than three? No, it's not. So it's actually going to skip these two. Test how it compared to five. Because now we've ruled out one and two. Those are no longer a possibility. If it were one or two, it would have cycled here and went back to sleep. But since it jumped those, uh, we can do compares to five. And these minuses are less than five. If it's five or greater, it'll jump those minuses and move out just the 100% laser. So, it is less than five. So, we move a half laser out. We send a two over to this chip so it knows that it's Uh, three or four units and you need to do something and then it'll just jump to sleep so this thing wakes up it turns itself off automatically brings in the two this thing will jump to sleep uh, how does it compare to two it's not greater than two so it'll skip this it's also not less than two so it'll skip these and it'll just say okay well it's three or four so we need to have 
the 20 degree flood completely on. So turn the thing completely on. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the only other the only other thing that happens is if Well, it's actually gonna come right here. So we get this in. This is a five count. So bring the five in, tell that thing to wake up and turn itself off. Okay, move, uh, t turn yourself off as well. Uh, is it less than three? Nope, so we're gonna jump those. Does it compare to five? It's not less than five. So we're gonna jump the whole way down and just move 100 out to the laser. This thing's not gonna wake up again. And that's it, that's the three possibilities. They are all there, they are all working, and this was solved fairly quickly. Let me actually see. I just did a lot of talking, but right now my timer is just over 31 minutes, so. So yeah, I did that one pretty quickly. Very, very happy with that. Uh, yeah, huge production. And lines are over what uh, is typical, but I, I've said before, I don't really care so much about these. It's all about the doing. We did it! We made some kind of thing that goes on another thing that's made for killing people and helps them kill people even better. Yay! Go us! Carl, I understand your concerns, but let's take this offline. Bam! So, Carbine Target Illuminator is complete. I thank all of you so much for watching. And we are moving along. Which, actually, which one is this? So, we're looking at two, four, six. Eight. I don't know if this one counts, but we'll say 10, 12, 14, 16. That's 17. So we are on the back end. We got five here. So there are eight more that we haven't seen at all. But yeah, very, very pleased with all that. Uh, I think we'll do Can You Keep a Secret next, but obviously. That will be next time, and I will see you there.